second course finds delicate herbed crepes filled with a mixture of goat cheese, olives, and fresh basil, served with a sweet onion sauce. Since it will take longest, we will begin the recipe by making the sauce first. In a saucepan, you'd heat a little oil and add the meat, and you'd cook the meat until it's evenly browned. You would lower the flame and add the onions. This way, the onions would cook slowly, drawing out the natural sugars and allowing the caramelization to take place. When that's done, you deglaze with your wine, cook that for just a minute, and add your rich veal stock. Bring the sauce up to a boil, lower the heat, and carefully skim the surface. When the sauce is reduced to the consistency of a syrup, you add your butter in a swirling motion over a very low heat. The butter is added at this point to give a certain gloss, a certain texture, and a certain balance to the sauce. Then you pour it into a, a fine strainer. Then you sort of stir the sauce through the strainer. Don't push it through so you don't get any particles being pushed into the sauce. The first step in making the filling for the crepes is to place the room temperature goat cheese into a bowl. And the next step is to chop finely the black olives, reserving some for the last garnish. You would finely shred the fresh basil, add it to the goat cheese, add some chopped parsley, California olive oil, and some fresh black pepper. And then with a wooden spoon or a spatula, you first mash the goat cheese mixture and then stir it into a nice smooth consistency. To prepare your crepes, you add about three quarters of an ounce of batter to a warmed pan. And of course, the idea is to get the crepes as thin as possible. And over a low heat, you're cooking them, trying not to brown them. And when the top is set, and you carefully and quickly flip the crepe over. Continue to cook for a few more seconds. And slide the crepe out of the pan. Now, being careful not to tear the crepe, you spread the goat cheese mixture over the entire surface, making sure you go all the way out to the edges. When that's done, you place a crosswalk in the crepe where you're going to fold it. This allows you to fold the crepe without tearing it. Once the crepes are made, you lightly brush a tray with some olive oil, place down the crepes, brush a little on top just so they don't dry out and place them in the oven to warm. For the garnish with a, with a candling knife, you put four or five strips into the cucumber. Slice them slightly at a bias, an angle, and blanch them in seasoned water. That is water that has a little salt and pepper. To arrange the plate, you place your warmed crepes down. Off to one side, your blanched cucumber slices. A little bit of the diced black olives. Carefully spoon the sweet onion sauce around. 
A wine recommendation for this course could be either an early harvest Zinfandel or a Merlot. The softness of either the early harvest Zinfandel or the Merlot will allow the characteristics of the goat cheese with the fresh herbs to still come through and uh, therefore combining a nice balance to the dish rather than overpowering it. For the main course, Chef Fortion has chosen Michigan beefsteak with chili corn sauce. The steak is sautéed and served with a sauce of chili, sweet peppers, kernels of corn, and accompanied by buttered scallions. The first thing we'll do for this recipe is make the chili corn sauce. With a sharp knife, you carefully remove the kernels reserving the kernels for the sauce garnish and the cobs for the actual making of the sauce. In a heavy bottom saucepan, you heat some oil to it's quite hot and add your diced meat trimmings. And you saute those until they're evenly browned. your onion, red and green pepper trimmings. Continue to cook those for just a, another minute. Add the minced garlic. You add your chili powder. Add your cayenne pepper, white pepper, and black pepper. This is a crucial time for the sauce because what you want to do now is lower the heat and gently cook the chili powder and peppers so you not only get the heat from the, the chili and pepper, but you also get the flavor from them. And that will only be accomplished by slowly cooking them and the heat from the pan will bring out those natural flavors. When the flavor is developed, you deglaze with your dry vermouth or white wine. And again, you want to cook this down into a sort of a chili paste. And you add your beef stock or veal stock. You add the corn cobs that you saved from before. And again, skim the surface of any coagulated meat particles or oil from the cooking process. You want to slowly reduce the sauce. When it's reached the syrupy consistency, you add your heavy cream. Stir it in and slowly bring it to a boil. You lower the heat and gently reduce the cream. When the sauce is the right consistency, you strain it through a fine strainer. Again, stirring the sauce through the strainer. To the strained sauce, we'll add the corn niblets, the red and green peppers, stir that in, and place it back on the fire. This way, the vegetable garnish in the sauce will remain crisp. This is a, a sirloin eye steak, but any steak that you prefer will do. You season it with salt, pepper from a mill, and rub it gently with a little oil. In a cast iron pan, you put just enough oil to cover the bottom of the pan, and you heat it. The cast iron pan holds the heat evenly. It also gives a, a nice charcoaly flavor to the steak. You want to be careful now to sear not only the top and bottom, but all the sides of the steak. When the steak is done, you remove it. And to cook the scallions, you place a little water and butter in a pan, add the scallions, and you slowly cook them so that they're al dente are still slightly crunchy and nicely buttered. 
you place the charred steak in the center of the plate. Spoon the sauce around. And then you garnish the plate with your buttered scallions. With this, I think you'd want to serve a, a full-bodied Pinot Noir or Cabernet with flavors of the beef and the chili. You'd want something that will stand up to, to those flavors. To conclude, a traditional American apple pan dowdy made of fresh apples, butter, molasses, rum, brown sugar, nutmeg, and cinnamon, served with whipped cream. Delicious! Okay, we're gonna peel and core the apples for the pan dowdy. And from our research, this is about the oldest recipe that we could find. After the apples are peeled, you core the apples. And in this case, I'm using a, a melon baller rather than an apple core because I just find that the apple cores don't get all of the core out. Slice the apple in quarters. And then into thin slices. Once all the apples are sliced, place them in a bowl with a little lemon juice, vanilla, and rum. Add the brown sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg, and molasses. You add the room temperature sweet butter and then mix it to make sure that all of the ingredients are well distributed and well incorporated. To prepare the tops and bottoms for the dowdy, we use a, a slightly sweetened raised cornbread for this, but you can use any sliced white bread. You butter the tops and bottoms of the rounds. Sprinkle with a little sugar. And place a round in the bottom of each of the ramekins. Spoon in the apple mixture. Place the second buttered and sugared bread round on top. Place the dowdies in a water bath and put that in your preheated oven. As the dowdies cook, they'll rise up and you just gently press the, the bread rounds back down. And then to serve the dowdy, you remove them onto a plate and serve them with slightly beaten cream. With an old-fashioned dowdy, it's nice to either serve a dessert champagne or any of the dessert wines would go just fine with this. Dinner at an American